A soldier and poet once described this highly trained unit of Filipino soldiers by announcing their arrival in the middle of the Battle of Bataan. Make way, make way! The scouts are moving in! He was referring to the Philippine scouts. Enlisted in the Philippine scouts was Sergeant Teofilo Ildefonso. Today, I stand here with great pride in front of the walls of the missing where Teofilo is memorialized. We are standing within the perimeter of what was then known as Fort McKinley, the home of the Philippine Scouts. As a Filipino-American, it's a privilege for me to recognize Teofilo here in the Philippines, where we were both born and raised, and I am honored to be able to tell the story of the sacrifice he made for this country and the United States, the country that I and his descendants now call our own. Born in 1902, Teofilo was the middle child of three boys. Orphaned early, he took responsibility for the care of the youngest brother, Teodoro. Growing up near a river, Teofilo taught himself how to swim and developed special skill and interest that would manifest later in his life. Seeking better opportunities, Teofilo at a young age relocated from his hometown of Pidig, Ilocos Norte, to the capital city of Manila, and eventually enlisting with the Philippine Scouts in 1922. The move opened new doors for him, including becoming a competitive swimmer. He represented the Philippines in three Olympic Games, the 1928, 1932, and the 1936, the Berlin Olympics. He won back-to-back -back bronze medals in the 200-meter breaststroke in the 1928 Amsterdam and 1932 Los Angeles Olympic Games. After the bombing of Pearl Harbor, the Japanese invaded the Philippines. Overwhelmed by the strong Japanese attack, the Filipino-American forces were forced to retreat to Bataan, where they made the heroic defense. The Ophelous unit, the 57th Infantry Regiment Philippine Scouts, was assigned the most critical point of the main defensive position in the Battle of Bataan. Despite their gallant efforts, the exhausted Filipino-American troops fell back against the continuous attack of the Japanese forces. Without reinforcements and weakened by starvation and disease, their ranks slowly collapsed. On April 9, 1942, Bataan surrendered. What followed is what has been engraved in history books as the Bataan Death March. Teofilo, you endured the march only to die as a prisoner of war. On June 19, 1942, when you expired in the arms of your brother, Teodo Teodoro, who you had cared for since birth. Teofilo, you best exemplify the good, two good traits of a Filipino. First, in Tagalog, machaga, which means persevering, as shown by teaching yourself how to swim and winning Olympic medals. And second, lakas ng loob, which means inner courage. Few are those who would go to battle forsaking family and kin, knowingly facing certain death. As I pick out your name from this wall, I cannot help but reflect on the ties that bind us all, our personal histories, the bridges that connect us from these islands to the U.S. mainland, and the paths that you have opened for succeeding, genera succeeding generations at the greatest cost. I am a direct beneficiary of your sacrifice, and for that, I offer a heartfelt thank you. Theophilo, you'll always be remembered. I honor you, I thank you. Maraming salamat po. <laughs>